In this video, I'm not focusing on how to care for these specific types of detritivores, but rather I'm trying to clear up misconceptions about detritivores, such as they're bad for your aquarium, or that it is impossible to have a balanced population of multiple different types of detritivores in your tank. Hi everyone, my name is Navin, and in my 55-gallon Wallstead-style aquarium, I keep snails, scuds, and cherry shrimp all inside the same tank. Detritivores are small organisms that feed on detritus, which is basically waste but includes things like uneaten fish food, dead leaves, algae, biofilm, fish poop, and other forms of decomposing organic matter. By breaking down waste products even further, detritivores facilitate the decomposition process, converting waste into simpler compounds that can eventually be used by plants. A lot of people have misconceptions that detritivores are not good for your tank. They think that snails need to be eradicated because they can asexually reproduce and may overpopulate your tank, or that scuds are detrimental to shrimp and plants because they will eat your plants and prey on your shrimp, eventually leaving you without a shrimp population. However, in my fully planted aquarium, I have a self-regulating, balanced population of various snails, cherry shrimp, and scuds that all live together without one species dominating over the others. And this is the way that it usually is in nature. There is nothing to fear when it comes to having multiple detritivores inside of your aquarium. Most of the time, you're probably going to end up with detritivores like snails or scuds for free and unintentionally as they hitchhike their way into your aquarium on aquarium plants or secondhand aquarium supplies. And you should embrace them, free biodiversity. Okay. Sometimes you do get unwanted hitchhikers, like this aquatic caterpillar that makes its shelter out of plant leaves and eventually turns into a moth. I'm not talking about those kind of hitchhikers. If you see that, you should probably remove it. I think that the biggest concerns people have when it comes to scuds is that scuds will reproduce too quickly and outcompete any shrimp in your tank for the available food source, or that scuds eat plants and will prey on your shrimp. We have to remember that in all of these ecosystem style aquariums or Wallstead style tanks that we need to have all levels of the food chain present in our tank. Everything has to be done in a balance. So this means that we need to expect that some of our fish will occasionally eat some of our scuds and even some of our cherry shrimp. We have to make sure that we provide ample hiding spaces for detritivores to breed and grow in, but we also have to make sure that there are predators in their tank to keep their populations in check. My white cloud mountain minnows know that there are scuds in their tank, and generally they leave the cherry shrimp alone once the cherry shrimp grow to a size larger than their mouths. You see, scuds generally are smaller and swim much faster than the cherry shrimp. Because the scuds are fast moving and very zippy in the water, they trigger the hunting instinct in the fish, whereas the cherry shrimp are generally very slow moving and can cohabitate peacefully with other nano fish. Now, if you have a betta fish or a predator fish like a cichlid or pretty much any larger fish, don't be surprised when your cherry shrimp becomes expensive fish food. A good rule of thumb is that if it can fit in your fish's mouth, it's going to become fish food. Shrimp, scuds, these kind of small crustacean-like creatures, these are generally live food sources for many type of fish. So we need to set reasonable expectations when we stock our aquarium with fish. If you go out and buy five random cherry shrimp and introduce them into your fully stocked cichlid tank, they're probably not going to make it and you're not gonna get that breeding colony of shrimp that you want. Another example is if you're trying to breed shrimp like in a shrimp only tank and somehow some scuds manage to enter their way into that shrimp only tank, both of these species are going to be competing for the same food sources and there may be competition between them, especially when there's not a predator to hunt on either of the two populations. Scuds and plants. Scuds generally will not eat healthy plants. Remember, these are detritivores that feed on detritus, like fish poop and uneaten fish food. These are not herbivores that feed on plant material. But if there's no food in your tank for your scuds to eat, they're going to find food. If the only thing you have in your tank are scuds and java moss, your scuds are going to eat your java moss. 
So I always overfeed all of my fish tanks because I know that I am feeding my snail population, my scud population, my shrimp population, and the fish inside of the aquarium. Maintaining and balancing detritivore populations. The population of detritivores in your aquarium grow directly in relation to the amount of food that you input into your tank. So if you only have snails in your tank and your snail population just keeps increasing and increasing, it's because your snails believe that the environment that they are in is abundant with rich food sources and this is making them breed more. If you're having this problem, it's because you're overfeeding. Decreasing the amount of food that you put in your tank will increase the competition between the snails that are all competing for the same food source. When you increase the competition between the snails competing for the same food source, unfortunately, the snails that don't make it to the food will die off. And this creates a self-regulating population based directly on how much food is entering the tank. Now, this applies to all detritivores, but the cool thing is that we can achieve the same results by increasing biodiversity. So rather than having just snails compete with other snails and seeing your snail population increase, if you have snails, scuds, and shrimp, because all of these species are trying to scavenge and find food, only the fittest of your snails, scuds, and shrimp are going to find enough food, reach maturity, and reproduce. The snails, shrimp, and scuds that were not able to find food are going to die off. By increasing the competition of different types of species of detritivores, this will create a balancing effect between the population of all of the detritivores that you do have, preventing one species from becoming dominant over the others. But in order to maintain populations of all of these detritivores, I make sure that I feed abundantly so that all of my detritivores have equal opportunity to compete for the food that I'm putting inside of the tank. And on that same note, I do make sure that there is predation on my cherry shrimp and scuds by keeping a colony of white cloud mountain minnows that use the scuds and occasionally a cherry shrimp as a live food source. By making sure that I feed abundantly to make sure all of my detritivores have an opportunity to compete with each other for the fish food, and making sure that I have predation from my fish on those population of scuds and cherry shrimp, I'm able to create a balanced ecosystem and food chain. Thank you so much for watching my fourth YouTube video. I'm a new channel and I love interacting with everyone, so please consider leaving a comment down below on what your favorite part of this video was or if you have any questions. Additionally, I make free educational content related to aquariums and fish keeping regularly, so please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon linked down in the description below. If you have any topics that you would like my perspective on or you want me to discuss, please leave a comment letting me know what your video suggestion is and I'll try my best to make it happen. I hope you have a great rest of your day.